Hello guys, Hadi Family Brit here again, and today we are going to actually start with what we plan to do. So without any further ado, I can get back to the screen to showcase what we have and tell us the plan. So I'm going to start with um, Great Projects. Uh, I think I've introduced this already. Um, it's quite self-explanatory and also it's available for exploration. So if you want to go through it, you can. Then also I've updated um, the active project we are working on. So again, we are going to construct our portfolio, which is going to be the basis to all the other projects we'll be working on. And the overview is quite straightforward. Embark on a creating journey to craft an exceptional and eye-catching portfolio. So yeah, we are literally commencing with creating our portfolio. And I've led the way already by creating mine, so I would advise us to do as well. And in regards to the um, rewards, it's going to be little, and it's going to be for the winner, so yeah. Probably we'll start from here and eventually if we get into the scope and we grow, they will probably have something better to have later on. However, aside from maybe gifting the winner a gift, we also get the chance to showcase other eye caching portfolios as well. So yeah, everybody wins at the end of the day. So because I base in Nigeria, I think it makes sense to just have um, the gift in different forms. So because my YouTube channel is not a lot to just Nigeria, the exercise is open to everybody. And the way I think of dealing with the reward is to have um, the reward probed into two. So we have for Nigeria, which I can easily get access to, and international winners, which I believe may be an Amazon gift. I've not really um, tried this, so we're going to see how this grows. But I'm pretty sure if the winner comes from Nigeria, this would be quite easy. So yeah. These are the rules, quite straightforward. The deadline is just for a week and it's going to end uh, 27. Then we're going to check through what we have. And in terms of the submission, it's quite straightforward. You provide your full name, your email address to easily reach out to you. Then the testing link. So that means I expect this to be available for testing. Then finally, your repository. So if you have multiple, you can specify them here so that I can go through your code because obviously I want to see what you do. At the end of this episode, I'm going to make my code base available so that you can have a basis, you have a reference to work with. However, I don't want you to recreate what I've done. So once I see you are literally doing the same thing I've done, then I won't really consider it. So that's just about that. So that's the scope. Um, I believe when you are seeing this video, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to just get access to it and get working if you need to. So with that said, um, let's quickly go over what I've done and just to give you better insight as to what I'm expecting from you. So again, this is my portfolio. I add a couple of effects just to make it entice a little bit. And the backend was created using juice.io. So for those of us who don't know Juice, Juice is like my OP project. At some point, I was thinking of making open source. At some point, I was thinking of making it a startup. Anyhow, it goes, but at the moment, it's my OP project. And what it does is quite simple. It makes you create a Django project faster, okay? So it handles everything from online here, and you can easily download your code afterwards. So getting started is quite easy. You can either sign up or sign in. I already have an account and I'm going to sign in. So because I back up my projects to the cloud, at the end of the day, it takes a while to reboot it and get you started. But once you are on, it's quite fast at that point. So if I refresh now, it's already here. So I have other projects here, but the one we are currently working on is the Portfolio 101 and it's quite straightforward. So all I had to do was create a main app, create theory models. Um, it includes my blog model, my project model, and work history model. And yeah, I think it's quite self-explanatory. In terms of my work history, the fields include the job title, the company name, the start date, the end date, the description, order, and logo. So technically, for those of us that are a little bit familiar with Django, I'm pretty sure we can come on juice.io and explore it easily, okay? And for those of us who are not entirely familiar, if you need some exposure, you can easily reach out to me. My contact is already on my portfolio, which I'm going to make available at the end of this episode. So yeah, I was able to spring up my backend with this, and I won't really dwell too much on that. The focus would be on showing you what I did 
on the front end. So back to my portfolio front end, um, one of the effects you get is when you scroll, you scroll by the old screen size. So you get to see everything. And I think this makes it even much more intuitive or let me say much more appealing. Yeah, that's what I'll use. And yeah, you have about me, you have all this. It's a single page application, so which means you can click this and go to where you want to. Quite straightforward. So yeah, let's quickly go over the code base for this so that you can take a look at what I did. And also, I'm going to make the code base available within the description so you can easily check that out. So let's go through the code base and see what we have. So here we are back within the front end code and let's go over what I have. So this is a basic uh, Next.js project. And while I was setting this up, I enabled um, Tailwind because I'm using Tailwind to uh, write the CSS. Even though, like I said, I don't entirely enjoy how it clutters up the code base. But yeah, it makes the work fast and I think that's good enough. So let's go over the code base, shall we? So here is the app and what the app entails is quite busy. This is what you also get by default. So we have the page, we have the layout, we have the favicon and that's all. So let's start with the page. So as you can see, it's a client based page. So everything is running on clients. And yeah, I don't know why we have to do this with the latest nest.js. It's not entirely intuitive, but there you have it. So. Using a uh, client here means you don't have to enforce it in all the components you've imported. They assume you are rock running on clients. And also I created a hook to undo my scrolling functionality. So I need to get to that later on. Then here is my layout quite straightforward. I changed the title, I changed the description and that was all. Then to my global CSS, I made use of two fonts. The torrent root, you can easily get this from Google Fonts. Then also, I made use of Inter, and I only made use of the default Inter font. That's the regular font. So that was it. Um, this was generated by Tailwind, so this is going to be there by default if you enabled Tailwind when setting up Nest.js. Then I created this utilities um, class for Tailwind. And what it does is it returns a line items normal because that is not available by default. So at some point due to mobile interactiveness, I want to be able to set my align items to normal. And defining this means I can communicate with this class from my Tailwind interface. So that's about that. Then I did a little bit of um, customization for my navigation bar. Then for the root, this is just like defining a variable name. Um, I created this BG uh, color that I can easily access from my body. So everything within my project is having this background color. Then for my HTML, I added this pro behavior to be smooth. Then I set a global um, class information for the font family. So by default, everything is going to be turret root. The font width is 600 and the color is white by default. Obviously, we want to use a color white because our background is dark. Then, um, yeah, in that position. So this is specific to, or uh, let's go back to the home page. So this is specific to this content. So that's what this configuration is all about. So the position is relative. The inner before is this. So it's a gradient color and inner after like this. So these are the general classes I, se I set. So as you can see, it's not much compared to having like 400 or 1,000 lines of code for CSS like we used to. And this is due to the help of Tailwind. Then we have Favicon. At the moment, this is the default Favicon. I have not changed it, but obviously you might want to. So yeah, that's it about the main app. So this is the app. This is what um, your users communicate with. Then I defined com some components. Um, and I label them. So we have common component, which means it can be used across board, um, such as the block card itself, the close icon, the header, the menu, and the project card. Then I have the hooks, which I think is literally the most important parts, which I'll probably just explain now. So the hook handles a lot of things. So, and one thing I try to avoid when creating this hook is the use of use state. So, when dealing with Pro, I've seen a lot of people use use state. 
And the effect of that is whenever you do anything with your pro, it re-renders the whole thing. Well, maybe React has the way to optimally re-render, but obviously you can avoid rendering if actually you want to, because as you are scrolling, everything has rendered in the first place. So there's no need to re-render anything. You just scroll within it. And that's why I've employed useref mainly. Okay. So parent in this is scrolling touch start. Yeah. I'm also including touch start because I'm handling the touch interface as well. So for my scrolling, my consideration is for the wheel. So what that means is you can still just move your stuff here directly, which makes sense. You don't want to um, control the scrolling from just anything. So you can still move this well. However, with your wheels, you can scroll like you want to. Okay. So that's about that. Then scroll section can scroll. So yeah, there are some sections that have scrolling within them. So for instance, the experience page, if you take a look, you find out that it's more than the uh, screen height itself. So as a result of that, it has problem within it itself. So yeah, we'll get to that as well. Then we have the sections. So these are the sections we are scrolling. We have the home, the experience, the about, the project, and so on. So undo sectional scroll. So this is more like undo sections that can be scrolled. And yeah, I think this is self-explanatory. I'm not going to go over it. I try to write my code as uh, easy to read as possible. And what that's one of the things you have to consider when writing your code. You want to write codes that people can read and understand what is going on. So everything I have here, I'm pretty sure we can shorten it, but why do you want to shorten it and affect the readability where you can make it very readable like this? So we have the default scroll, we have the undo wheel, we have the undo touch start, we have the undo touch move, and so on. So everything is done within the use pro o and all i have to expose from here is go to about and go to uh, or rather and ash and and do action so that's literally it so um finally we have the pages that we are working on we have the about page we have the old page the main page itself and everything here is just gsx html mixed with a couple of javascript and your tailwind so most of the content here are, are coded, like uh, I've shown you within um, the Juice app. Just the work history, the blogs, and the projects are obtained from the backend. So if you want, you might have everything uploaded. I'm not going to um, restrict you for that. As long as I can see a beautiful portfolio, then we are good to group. As a matter of fact, it's a portfolio, and you should be able to update it anytime you want. So yeah, I think the pages to are self-explanatory. I don't want to dwell too much on this. We are not really doing anything special in this case. None of this is new. If you care to know about how I write my Next.js app, I have a couple of um, tutorial episodes already that I've done creating a project, and I did a gradual walkthrough of Next.js. So you can check those up and get a better insight. I'll link some in the description section so you can check it out. So typically, that's all we have. Again, this repo, will be available for us to see as reference. So yeah. So there you have it guys. This is where I would like to round up um, on this video. And on this note, the exercise has already started. So I would encourage us to get on to it, do what you can do, build something, and let's have our projects uh, up together. Thanks for listening and see you in another one. Bye for now.